I swear that I'm going to talk about things other than Google Gemini and AI type things. At some point, I've got plenty of other videos coming, but humor me for one more. I made a video, or actually a couple of videos yesterday, talking about how Google Gemini is now live. If you missed that somehow, that is what we've been talking about for a while, Assistant with Bard. It is now live. You can download it. You can hold down your power button on your uh, Pixel devices or, you know, just trigger... Uh, anyway, you trigger Google Assistant, and it's going to now trigger this new version of Assistant, which is Gemini. It's powered by a much more intelligent LLM. And in that first video, which got a lot of attention, a lot of attention, more than I expected, actually, there were a lot of questions, concerns, things like that. So in this video, I want to quickly go through those questions and concerns. But rather than reading all of those comments myself and doing what I would normally do, pulling up a Google Keep note and basically writing down things that people ask and then putting tallies next to it to determine which questions were asked the most and then trying to answer those questions, what I did is I copied and pasted all of those comments. I just highlighted them all with the timestamps and the usernames, all that stuff in there. It doesn't matter. I pasted it into Google Gemini and I asked it to tell me what the primary concerns and problems people were having were. And it gave me this beautiful output that you are currently looking at. So that is what I'm going to work off of to answer these questions. I'm telling you, if you don't think Google Gemini is awesome and useful, you just aren't thinking about it very, very hard. It is fantastic. So let's go through some of these questions. How does Google Gemini work with slash differ from Google Assistant? It says users want a smooth handoff or integration between the two for optimal use. They want to know if assistant features that they rely on will be integrated into this thing or if they might disappear as Gemini develops. That's a really, really good question. And I think that the best way to answer this is actually to turn to Twitter. And we're going to look at this particular Twitter account, Jack. I have no idea how I would pronounce that last name. But this is someone who actually does work at Google on Bard, now Gemini, and they are answering a lot of these questions. And so we can get this straight from the proverbial horse's mouth here. And a lot of people were having these exact questions. This individual was asking Gemini to set a reminder, and they were told, I can't assist you with that. This is not functioning. So what Jack said is they are working diligently to bring more assistant features to the Gemini app, routines, calendar, reminders, etc. Right now, some things absolutely do work like I showed the other day. I can do this. Turn off the studio lights. And that's going to work just fine. And now we are a spooky video. But lots of other things don't work. Home control is there, but lots of other assistant tasks are not there. Let's turn these lights back on using the little shortcuts. And we are back to normal. So these things are coming. They are aware that we want these things and they are building them out. This is very early on. If you desperately need these things to be part of Assistant, don't install the Gemini app. You can keep using Assistant exactly as you have been with no changes. You might want to just wait a little while. These things will be built in. He also mentions shopping lists is something that they are working on. The next question, why is Gemini so slow? Well, because it's doing potentially a lot of work and it's doing things in a very different way, right? Now, this can be frustrating though because some tasks like asking it, what's the forecast for today? Sometimes take, sometimes that takes quite a bit longer than you think it ought to. Sometimes it's relatively quick, but there's definitely a much larger delay on these things. That's because it's running it through a literal large language model. It's not the same thing as Assistant. Hopefully, these things can be sped up. Personally, what I would like to see happen is with some questions, let's just use the old Assistant way, right? Like if it can recognize, hey, they're just asking for the weather forecast. We don't need to run this through Gemini. We can just run this through Google Assistant and get that answer out really nice and fast. That would be logical to me. Will that happen? I don't know, but Gemini definitely is slower than assistant. And it's one of these things where I think people are willing to wait an extra beat for certain questions, but certain questions it doesn't make sense to wait for, right? So asking the forecast, we shouldn't have to wait for that. That is definitely a problem. Will there be a free version of Gemini? Yes, there is a free version of Gemini. In fact, you can just download it and begin using it and it is free. There is, of course, Gemini Advanced, which is what I am actually using. If I bring this down a little bit, you can see there that I'm using Gemini Advanced, which is $20 a month, but it also gets you the Google One 2 terabyte 
subscription. So there's not it's not just Gemini that you're paying for. You're also getting the two terabyte Google One subscription as well. So keep that in mind. But yes, there is a free version. International availability. Many commenters, particularly from Australia, are disappointed Gemini is not available in their region. Let's jump again back to Jack's Twitter account. This individual said, here we go again. I guess New Zealand is not on the list. Jack said, Monday. And if I search for the word Monday again, please roll out in India, Monday. It appears Monday is the day when this thing is going to hit a lot of other regions. So that is definitely uh, good to hear. I understand why people will be frustrated, but it should be rolling out to more regions on Monday, which if you're watching this much later, this is February the 9th. And it is a Friday, so just a few short days away. And even more directly, home control working now, more features coming soon. U.S. Today, Asia Pacific, Latin America, North America, Africa next week. So the rest of these down here, main problems are a little bit redundant. We've kind of already covered them in the common problems or common questions section. But there is one thing that I do want to clarify. So I mentioned in my video that it was kind of frustrating that whenever you're doing a command on here, you have to trigger the assistant. What's the forecast for today? And you expect it to just complete the task, but it does not do that. You actually have to hit the send button. Now, this is not true, as about 18 people mentioned in the comments of the first video. If you use the hey blank hot word, you say that, it triggers it. You say it, and then it will go ahead and send it. To me, this immediately seemed like an oversight, probably something that was not intentional, and I can show you here that that's the case, and this should be fixed pretty shortly as well. When I give it a command, it doesn't process until I click the send button. Jack says, we are working on that as well. So if that seemed really weird to you, like that maybe wasn't intentional, might have been a bug or an oversight, like it did to me, appears to be the case, and hopefully that can be fixed very, very quickly. That is like the weirdest thing about this to me. Like, why are you requiring me to press a button when that was never the case for a system before? Hopefully that's fixed very soon. So just to kind of clean things up, I asked if there were any more questions only a few people had, and there indeed were. So family sharing options, a user inquires about how subscribing to Gem Gemini Advance affects their existing Google One family plan, and if they can remain a member. I'm not entirely sure how this works because prior, myself and my wife both had Google One subscriptions to expand our storage. I think we we're both paying like a couple dollars a month. Of course, this new thing is $20 a month. It's two terabytes, but there is family sharing there. So you can share that two terabytes of cloud storage with family members. So of course, I did this. My wife is in my Google family, so it is extended to her, but she still has another month. We canceled it, but obviously, there's still another month or so of her current plan there. So I'm assuming once that lapses, she'll just kind of roll into this uh, broader plan that she's covered by. So uh, again, I don't know for sure how this works because I've not done it before, but I'm assuming that should be how that will work. Kind of already mentioned SBS, it can control smart home devices, device support. Individuals mentioned device specific questions like a user not being able to access Gemini on their Pixel Fold. This has been kind of the weirdest thing for me. I've tried it on several devices here at my house, my Pixel Fold, my wife's Pixel 8 Pro, my OnePlus Open, my S23 Ultra, my Surface Duo 2, and my Z Fold 4. Of all of these devices, only one of them has not worked, and it was my Z Fold 4. I grab it real quick. When I fire it up, this is the screen I get, but when I hit get started, I get this screen here, which is telling me that Gemini is not available. I've tried clearing storage in the Google app. Of course, I've closed force close the app and open it back up again. I don't know what's going on there. Can't really say much. What's weird is that it's a situation where like some someone said their Pixel Fold wasn't working. Obviously my Pixel Fold is working just fine. So there's definitely some weirdness with this rollout. I would say give it some time and hopefully this stuff clears itself up. And this last one we have definitely already covered as well, guys. So there you go. That's kind of hopefully most of the big questions at least somewhat answered in regard to Gemini as it was uh, just recently released, and there was a lot of confusion about it. I would recommend that for a lot of people, you might be better off just using the Gemini website on your phone and keeping your Google Assistant as it is, so don't install the app. But if you're like me, and you don't use Assistant for these sorts of things, like setting reminders, appointments, and things like that, I just do that manually already. 
For me, it makes sense to go ahead and install it, but you have to make that determination for yourself. One smart thing that you could do, most obviously, if you still are on the Bird app, is to go follow Jack. I'll put a link to his profile down below because he is very rapidly answering questions to people that are on Twitter. So uh, I've communicated a lot of them to you, but you can go follow him directly. So thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.